Let's now go over to our lab environment where I'll show you how to access the local and remote consoles, use the web interface, run through the initial configuration, and then finally verify that that configuration took effect by again accessing the Log Insight Virtual Appliance after the restart. So with that, let's get started. We're here in my VMware vSphere lab, and at this point, we have the vCenter Log Insight Virtual Appliance successfully deployed. It's powered on. We even expanded the database virtual machine disk file to ensure that we have plenty of room for log data. So we're ready to perform that initial configuration of vCenter Log Insight. To do that, we'll go to the IP address or the DNS hostname if you've configured one for the vCenter Log Insight Virtual Appliance using our web browser. I entered the IP address for the Log Insight Virtual Appliance and we get the security warning here. I'll click to proceed anyway. And then we get welcome to vCenter Log Insight. I didn't have to log in. There's no administrative password configured at this point. That's something that we'll be doing here in the initial configuration. So there's no login. We'll just click next to get the initial configuration started. And in fact, that administrative password and the administrator email is one of the first things that we set. So I'll set the admin email to be admin at wiredbraincoffee.com. Then I'll set the password to my super secret password and click save and continue. Now, because I'm using the beta version here, the license key is already entered. But if you downloaded an evaluation, I believe you will receive a license key via email or you'll log in to the VMware website to get your evaluation license key. Of course, if you purchase Log Insight, you'll have your own VMware vCenter Log Insight license key to enter here through that purchase. So once you enter that license key, you'll click here to set the key. You'll see the license status, the license type, and the expiration date for the license, and then you can just click continue. Next, we're asked for some general configuration information here. As you can see from the dots across the top, we're roughly halfway done with the initial configuration. We just need to enter the email address that will be used for general system notifications. So this could be a comma separated list of email addresses, or it could be a distribution list, let's say that you've configured over in your Exchange server. So it might be something like vCenter log insight at wiredbrain coffee.com or it could be admin at wiredbraincoffee.com or something like alert at wiredbraincoffee.com so I entered a few just sample email addresses there next we need to specify whether or not we want to help out VMware by sending weekly trace data to VMware as part of a customer experience improvement program. Well, sure, I'd be glad to. It is anonymous data, and it will help VMware to improve the product in the future. So I'll click Save and Continue here. Now we're asked to configure the time information for the vCenter Log Insight Virtual Appliance. Of course, anything related to time and date stamping is crucial when it comes to logging and correlating log data. So think about it, vCenter Log Insight is going to receive syslog data from many sources. It needs to put all that information together and correlate those events in a chronological order. So to do that, it has to have 100% accurate time and date information, both the timestamps on the logs that are coming in and the time and date configuration on the server itself so that it can put these things in chronological order. For that reason, you really have to use NTP, which is the network time protocol, to ensure that your vCenter Log Insight virtual appliance has 100% accurate time and date information. There's really nothing to do here to configure it. It's already configured by default, or it will be as soon as we click Save and Continue. It's already got the NTP servers configured here that are out on the internet, so your virtual appliance will need internet access, at least on the ports related to NTP. And we can just click Test here, to ensure that the vCenter Log Insight Virtual Appliance can reach those network time servers out on the internet. As you can see, the test successfully completed, so we'll just click Save and Continue here. Now that we know we have valid NTP access to the internet and our time and date will be 100% accurate. 
Up next is the SMTP configuration. So your log inside virtual appliance needs to be able to send email to alert you to important events and system notifications. To do that, it's going to have to have information about your email server. So this might be something like smtp.wiredbraincoffee.com and then you'll likely have to put in a valid username and password down here and then you'd want to send a test email to yourself of course to make sure that you can receive an email from Log Insight to verify that it can actually send it. Since I don't have a local email server in the lab environment I'll just click save and continue here and that brings us to the VMware integration configuration. So this is pretty unique because Log Insight is of course a VMware product it can integrate with vCenter Server and vCenter Operations Manager. While technically, I suppose it's not required to integrate it really with either one, I'm sure 100% of the users out there are going to integrate it at least with vCenter Server because that's how Log Insight is going to learn about your ESXi hosts and retrieve statistical information from your vCenter Server. Now we're at the point of integrating Log Insight with VMware vCenter and vCenter Operations Manager. Now, while it's technically not required to integrate Log Insight with either one of these, I'm sure that 100% of the users out there will integrate Log Insight with vCenter Server. After all, that's one of the primary reasons that you're using Log Insight is to gather system events from your vCenter Server and from your ESXi hosts and correlate all that data and better troubleshoot and monitor your VMware vSphere virtual infrastructure. So you want to at least integrate it with vCenter Server. So I'll just click Enable here, and then I'll type in my vCenter Server information. And click Test. As you can see, the test was successful. And in a future lesson, I'll come back and we'll integrate Log Insight with vCenter Operations Manager because not everyone out there is going to be using vCenter Operations Manager, I'm sure, but it is an excellent solution and an excellent product, and I hope you will at least consider or evaluate vCenter Operations Manager. So we'll come back to that, but really that integration, or at least the configuration of it, is as simple as it was to integrate Log Insight with vCenter. Simply check the enabled box, enter the host name, username, password, and click test. I'll click save and continue here to move on. And now we're being prompted about whether or not we want to enable data archiving. So what happens is when your vCenter Log Insight database runs out of storage capacity, you can enable archiving, or actually you should have enabled it ahead of time, so that that data can be sent to an NFS path. That way you'll be able to preserve that old data and to ensure that it's not just rotated out of the system, that it's actually preserved and sent to this NFS logging location. So I don't have this configured and that is something we'll be configuring in a later lesson. Let's just click save and continue here. And now we're at the point of restarting Log Insight. I'll just click restart. Now we're going to shut down the Log Insight virtual appliance to make this configuration take effect. I'll be back in just a second to ensure that Log Insight has successfully restarted and we can access all of the associated interfaces. All right, the Log Insight virtual appliance successfully restarted and we were brought immediately back here into the web interface and we're actually inside the vSphere dashboard as you can see here. We're on the overview. We're looking at the last five minutes of data. And there were a few events that happened here. And I'm sure that this information was gathered from our VMware vCenter server because at this point, that's the only thing that we've connected Log Insight to. We haven't sent any of our ESXi host syslog data to Log Insight. We've only connected it to the vCenter server. That's how it works. It has to be connected not only to vCenter but also each of the ESXi hosts have to be configured to send their log data to Log Insight. So this is the web interface. Again, we're in the vSphere dashboard. If I click on one of these other options here, so far there's not a lot of data because as I said, we haven't sent any data from our ESXi hosts 
to the login site server. If we go into the interactive analytics tab up here on the top, we do have a few events here, again, which have been learned from our VMware vCenter server. You can see that administrator logged in, logged out, and so far, to be candid, that may be all that we have. If we go up here to the user dropdown, this is where you can configure your own settings, such as your email address and password, also where you would go to log out. If we go to the little gear here, this is where you configure the administrative settings for login site, which is all the same things that we configured in the initial configuration wizard and much more. The health of the server, you can see how much storage space it has available, how much memory and CPU it's using, IP address information, active queries, statistics. This is where you would restart the login site, virtual appliance. You can see user administration. Inside the user section, this is where you would go to add or reconfigure or delete users that are allowed to log in to the login site server. There's license information in here. And then general configuration. Most of this general configuration here are the types of things that we configured in the initial configuration. You can see that the web interface has authentication enabled. There's our email alerts, usage reporting, time configuration, SMTP server configuration, VMware vCenter and operations manager integration, storage configuration, which is really just the option to enable or disable data archiving for login site, SSL certificate information, and system parameters. This isn't something you would generally configure in here. It says do not change settings on this page unless authorized by VMware support services. So that's kind of the general overview of the administration configuration. There's also content pack configuration. By default, we only have one content pack in here. And in a later lesson, I'll show you how to create your own content and packs, export those, and re-import those back in. So again, this is the web interface here. I'll just go here to log out. And it brings us back to the login console for vCenter Log Insight. Now, I said I'd also show you how to access the local console as well as the SSH remote console. Let's go back to our vSphere web client. So here in the vSphere web client, of course, to access the local console, I can just click on the console icon here, which may or may not have anything in it, or just click Launch Console. And since we're running the web client, we get the web client interface for the console. I'll just select that, press Enter, and there we go. We get the vCenter Log Insight local console. And as you can see, it says to press Control-Alt-F1, Control Alt F1 to log in. And the default account here is root. And then there's no password. So don't try the word VMware. Don't try the password that you configured for the admin account. Don't try to log in as admin with the password that you configured on the admin account because that's only for the web interface. On the local console, the CLI console, the default login is root with a blank password. Don't forget that. So I'll just press enter on password. It says, please enter the old password, which is, again, blank. So I'll press enter there. Now enter the new password. If I try my standard password, I get bad password. It's based on a dictionary word, or it's not going to meet the complexity requirements because notice up there, password complexity requirements are minimum of eight characters, minimum of one uppercase, one lowercase, one digit, and one special character. Wow, that's really complex. So let's try, actually, uh, we're going to have to try this again now. It timed out. We're going to try uppercase VM, lowercase where. So we meet the upper, we meet the lower. We need a digit. So I'm going to do one, two, three. And then we need a special character. So I'm going to do the explanation point. So let's type that again. Capital VM, lowercase w-a-r-e numbers one, two, three, and explanation point. Obviously, you should not use that. It's very generic. It does meet the complexity requirements, but people might watch this lesson and might actually use that, and I don't want to be you know, responsible for that. So 
make sure that you configure your own complex password. Don't use that one. But keep in mind, there are some very strict password complexity requirements there. All right, so we log in to the Log Insight Virtual Appliance. And, you know, this is SUSE Linux. So I can do CD backslash, I can do LS minus L. I've got all the standard, you know, Linux directories there. I can do a PS to list out my processes, PS minus EF to list out all the processes. We've got Log Insight, you know, processes up and running there. Let's do a DF here. And we get a list of the file systems that are mounted. You can see the data core file system there is very large. It's actually one terabyte plus the 256 gigs that was already configured minus some overhead. So it comes out to what roughly 116,000 gigabytes there or 1.1 terabytes roughly. So that's where the vCenter Log Insight database is going to go. I've got a ton of this space configured for that. Although I'll let you in on a little secret. It's, it's actually thin provisioned and I don't really have that much storage space. Uh, perhaps even on that VMFS file system. So I have to keep that in mind, but really it should be fine because again, this is just a lab environment, but that's not something you'd want to do in production, obviously. So we successfully logged in to the local console. Let's go ahead and exit out of this. I'll hold down control alt and press F2 to bring us back to that menu interface for the local console. I'll hold down control and alt to get my mouse back. I'll close this out and then I'm going to go ahead and use my putty client and I'm going to connect to the IP address of Log Insight. I'll accept the security key there and then now I'm going to log in as root. It says VMware vCenter Log Insight. I know I'm connected to the right host and I'll use that complex password that we entered earlier. And there we go. We're able to successfully log into Log Insight and check out our file systems, check out our processes, CD into the bin directory, do an LS minus L here, and everything looks hunky dory, right? So you would only use this CLI based console, either local or remote, typically for troubleshooting. If VMware support says you need to go in here, and do something it's not something that you would use you know hopefully every day and that's because you've got such a great graphical interface you've got a slick html5 based web interface that you can perform interactive analysis on you know check your dashboards and then get your alerts via email if something critical happens so that's how you access the local interface the remote interface via ssh and then of course our VMware vCenter Log Insight web-based interface. We successfully performed the initial configuration. Log Insight is configured and up and running and ready now for us to send our syslog data from our ESXi hosts over to Log Insight to be preserved, stored in the database, and then analyzed. And with that, we've reached the end of this lesson covering configuring vCenter Log Insight. Thanks for watching.